Hello, good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? I am Ronnie West. Of course, you're on my Facebook. You should know that. I feel like I'm on Fly to Be Queen today, but I'm not. <laughs> but I wanted to let you guys know that we are finally live. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're here. We're live. Um, make sure you can, um, if you come into the live stream, let us know that you can hear us properly and that. Um, you know, I hope all is well with you and yours and that you're safe and sound. Um, as you know, during the month of April, I'll be doing live with me and my friends. As you see, I have a different friend here today who is a, a licensed therapist. So uh, Matthew, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself to the folks before we get into this conversation that I think is very relevant for today. Hi, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm a toxic relationship specialist. Uh, I help people um, that are in emotionally abusive relationships. That can be any type of uh, relationship. It can be um, obviously a romantic relationship, but I deal with a lot of people who have uh, toxic parents, toxic family members, um, go to toxic churches. Um, I do a lot of corporate speaking engagements on uh, toxic workplaces as well. Wow. So yes, yeah, so we have a, a, a guru here is what I would call him. And do you do virtual sessions as well for your clients? I, I do primarily virtual sessions. I deal with okay. people all over the place. Um, and I also have a uh, podcast a lot of people listen to um, all over the place. Um, it's on, on all, all podcast platforms called um, Toxic to Triumph as well. Okay, so toxic triumph. So I will definitely make sure to drop all that in the comments once we end with this conversation today. Now, I want you to encourage you, like if you watch this, if you feel like if you have in your heart to donate to Matt, I have his cash app up above, but of course you don't have to do that. But we want to get this information out to the community, but anybody that is sharing, taking their time to share with us, we want to also uh, give back to them as well. So we're going to cover today's topic, which is dealing with difficult people in a quarantine. So Quarantine with difficult people is what we're saying. Um, but you're going to really talk about some tips and some things to use and even maybe how to get out of a toxic situation that you didn't realize you were in until maybe the quarantine happened. So, Matt, I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor and get started with this uh, tip, this critical tip. Yeah, um, so I think that um, right right now, it, obviously, it's uh, it's a difficult time because uh, even people who are in a healthy relationship, even even the most um, even the most friendly people, I would say, uh, you can only stand them so much, so to speak. But oftentimes, when we when you know in situations like this, we're in close quarters with people who are very difficult, highly critical, emotionally um, emotionally abusive, abusive, or even physically abusive. It becomes even more problematic because there's nowhere to go. Um, there's, uh, you know, the, the finances are, are tight right now, which causes a lot of stress. Uh, there's, lo there's not a lot of action to kind of take people's mind off of things. There's not a lot of things, that, there's not a, place, a lot of places you can go to uh, kind of distract yourself um, or even distract the person that's abusive. Um, and for all those reasons, over these last few weeks, we've actually seen, seen an increase, not only in, in domestic abuse, but um, but with emotional abuse and, um, you know, and, and really in all types of abuse. And it's, it's having a, a major impact in families um, and people's mental health and um, people's overall well being. Wow. So if you're in this situation, and, 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 I, and like I said, I think what I'm starting to notice is that um, I think a lot of people now that we're about two weeks in, three weeks in, that's why I said I wouldn't start the lives until like April and May. Um, that a lot of things are now starting to happen or a lot, of, a lot of things are starting to occur. Or you're realizing that you're in this situation. What is the first step of action if you realize, oh, I thought I was in a good relationship or you know, I had to make sure that my family member was with me, but now I'm starting to realize this is kind of a toxic environment. What is your first course of action? Well, I, I think that the first course of action, like once you've realized that this is toxic, once you realize that, um, that this is something that you need to get out of, is uh, is really to start um, start putting a, a plan in place, and you you have to open. Your, it, it's as difficult as it is. The first thing that people want to do is they kind of want to, uh, uh, they want to hide the abuse, and they want to make excuses, and they want to um, they want to kind of defend the abuser. There's there's different terminologies uh, terminology for people who defend the uh, defend the abuser. There's trauma bonding. There's um, Stockholm syndrome, where you, you you're actually in love with the person that that's abusive. Um, but you really have to start having dialogue with people that you know that you can trust, uh, whether that be a 
friends, whether that be a family member, whether that be a therapist like myself, um, in some situations, you may not have any more friends or family members because uh, the abuser has really kind of pulled you away from them and it's really isolated you. And the only people in your, in your life at this point may be, the, may be in the abuser's social circle. Uh, so for those reasons, um, people like myself, um, there's, you know, I have a support group, uh, an online support group that, um, that people can go, go in and kind of talk and vent. And um, even doing that, even if you haven't decided to leave, even talking to others and, and sharing your experience, you're going to eventually get to the point where once it's coming out of your head and out of your mouth and you start seeing other people's reaction to what, what's happening to you, you're going <laughs> to, excuse me you're gonna realize that what you're going through, um, it's not normal, it's toxic, and you're gonna start start making um, actionable steps towards getting out of it. Okay. So really it sounds like create the plan is maybe the first step of actions. And find people that well, you create, can actually- I, say, I, would say the, I would say the first step, if even because most people's first step mm-hmm. is not, I wanna get out. Most people's first step is, is, is this normal? You know, okay. because, um, you know, you. Most people who, I shouldn't say most, I would say close to all people who are in some sort of toxic or abusive relationship, you mm-hmm. know, have a very high tolerance for that type of behavior. So for them, and especially if you've been in that, that, uh, that relationship for a long period of time, it feels like it's normal. It feels like this is every, this, this is just everyday life. It's, it's very, it's very similar. I, I heard someone um, give a great analogy the other day. It's kind of like going into a room and we've all gone into a room and, and it stinks. You know, it smells like garbage or whatever, mm-hmm. or um, it just has a funky smell to it. Well, after you've been in that room for a long, for a decent amount of time, you, that smell goes away. It's not so much that the smell goes away, it's just that you get used to it. And a lot of times in situations where people are being abused over a long period of time, you're just used to it. And you just don't, you may not like it, but you just think that this is what everyone, this is just a part of everyday life. And so I would say the first step is to, is to talk to people, is to okay. kind of open, you know, open up yourself to people who are safe, people who are not going to run back and talk to the abuser, people who are not gossiping about you, um, but people who are going to listen and people are going to not only encourage the right thing, but are, um, but are, are going to keep you safe. And, and then once you start developing that network Mm -hmm. then start developing that action action plan you know of putting away money knowing where to go who to go who to contact and having um a plan a it might be like more of a long-term strategy of okay after let's say you put away money for the next several weeks during the quarantine and i know that once this quarantine is up you know I'm, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna leave um that might be plan a but there also may need to be a plan b of what am I going to do if this person pops off and it's to a point where it's life-threatening, you know, right here, right now, and I have to leave with the clothes off, uh, you know, on my back. Um, right. There needs to be a plan B in place where, you know, if, if this happens, then this, then, you know, I'm packing me and the kids up, me and, you know, the necessities and we're leaving and we're going to so-and-so's house. And they're, they know they're aware and they know that if I call at four in the morning, they know that it's, there's a reason for it. Um, developing passwords with with people who are, are close to you like if you if I call you and I say hey I'm, I'm just really thirsty they know that things are popping off and I'm, I'm coming over tonight or call the authorities or whatever right. plan that you have in place all right so really it sounds like right. so step number one let me say that correctly is to talk to people and then find right. people you feel safe talking to so maybe it's a therapist maybe it's a close friend outside of that circle with that toxic a person that you may be in quarantine with and then as you may be developing a plan to leave after the quarantine is lifted, um, you know, being able to set up the password. I've never even thought about that. Set up a password or a unique, I would think a unique saying. Yeah. Um, I remember like listening to one time, I think it was a somebody, I think it was in a domestic abuse, something, but the person had called and act like they was ordering a pizza. And that's the a, uh, that's a- worker knew that that was signaling that that was that person was being domestic abused at that time. That is a, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's a universal 911 call. So okay. If you call 911 and if you act like you're ordering a pizza, they know to send the authorities. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So everybody, that's a universal 911 call. Make sure you use that uh, uh, example. I didn't know that, but I remember reading about that. 
And I was like, oh, that's a good way because you can't, you don't want to, um, I think, um, push the abuser to become more violent, right? In right. that situation. But you want to try to get safe, um, safety. Now, what else would you um, advise? We do have some people in the live, but then I know a lot of people watch the lives after we get off. So if you have any um, information or you want to contact Matt, I have tagged him up above on the video. So make sure you reach out to him. If you know, share out this video too, because even if you're not dealing with the situation, you never know who he is. Somebody on your timeline may really need this information and you could really help them through this. So make sure you share out this live whenever you watch it. Um, and this is really critical um, tips and so forth. So what other tips do you have for us today, Matt? Well, some of the tips, um, I, I would actually, I would say more awareness. Um, not all abuse is physical. Some of the abuse, mo actually majority of the abuse that, that I deal with, that I talk to people with, majority of it is not physical. It's actually mm -hmm. emotional. Sometimes it is, uh, there's such thing as legal abuse. Uh, there's such thing as uh, as financial abuse. You know, I, now what um, legal you know, abuse? What, Explain that one first before you keep. Um, most of the, most of the people that are dealing with some sort of legal abuse are um, people who are already outside of the relationship, and uh, I've heard of people. I mean, because once you once you divorce someone, once you've left someone, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, there's literally not a lot stopping them from taking you back to court for mm -hmm. some of the most. From for some of the silliest things that you can possibly think of, wow. but if you but if you really think about that, even if even if let's say, let's just say that um, you you divorce someone and um, I'm just gonna throw out you you decide to buy a new car and they decide to take you back to court because maybe they feel like now you have more money and they want to um, they want to investigate to see if they can get more child support. Well, mm -hmm. there's nothing stopping them from doing that. And that's more legal fees. That's more, um, that's more lawyer, lawyer fees, obviously. So that, that's time off of work. And it, it causes a major inconvenience in your life. Well, once that is over with, let's say that everything is, is, all, is all clear. Let's say that you decided that you, you wanted to start dating again. Well, mm -hmm. if that takes the person off, there's nothing stopping them from taking you back to court again. And wow. trying to, and, you know, there's not, there's not a lot stopping them from doing things like that. I mean, obviously, once you go to court, you can do some things to, you know, write some things up to prevent things like that. But, um, but legal abuse is, is uh, very, very uh, real. Uh, so is financial abuse. Um, I was talking to a woman one time, she had a shared account with someone. And um, anytime, and he, she was a career woman. And he convinced her to, um, to be a stay at home mom. And anytime that he felt that she was going to leave, he would wipe the bank account clean. And wow. when I say, when I say that he thought that she was going to leave, I don't mean like they would get into an argument. I mean, you know, she was five minutes late coming home from the grocery store or, um, you know, just some of the most strange things that would, you know, and, and so when people do things like this on a consistent basis, especially if someone is, um, you know, is not working or they're a stay-at-home mom or, or in a situation like this where, where they're in a quarantine, it feels like the other, the abuser has all the, all the power that they have all the cards in their hand. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, yeah, they may have majority of it, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get out. Wow. So, okay, so I'm, I didn't even think about the legal thing because that's why I said, hey, you know, I wanted to understand more about it, but I didn't even think that people don't really let things go. So then, of course, they're still kind of leaning on and trying to get you back in some way, shape or form, I guess, through. And that's another way of being abused. But even more about the emotional abuse, I think um, a lot of people are now at home with, like you said, the parents, with maybe a relationship and um, even with the kids, right? So I think um, that's coming up now is what I'm starting to realize in this week that um, we're entering that um, a lot of people are trying to ha are having like spats, right? Because you're not used to being enclosed with that group of people at this amount of time and you really don't have a way to get out or get away. So right. what is some, um, some topics or some suggestions you have on that? Well, um, so for people who I would say are in a healthy relationship, are in a, a good relationship, that things were primarily going well before this. Mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, everyone, everyone needs their time away. Even if it's going for a walk, even if that is just going into your own room and your own space, you know, to read, to um, 
kind of get kind of identify back with yourself once again. Um, because even even in the, the best relationships, it, it's two individual people who come together and bring the best for, um, you know, for the relationship and for the family. It's not, you know, two kind of blending. You're, you're kind of on your own separate journey and you're, you're enjoying each other's journey together. Um, mm-hmm. And when you're in close quarters and like, you don't and like, I mean, you've really kind of lost your identity. People aren't working right now. You people are, you know, once again, in close quarters and you know, you may not be able to enjoy life the way that you, the way that you are used to. You can't, we can't go out to eat, you know, the date nights are kind of done. Um, you know, so finding a, finding a, you, you really have to find a way to adjust to a new normal and find a, you know, find a way to really still kind of get in touch with yourself, even if it, if it, even if that is through meditating um, or even just finding a, a new show or something that, that you, really can find enjoyment and fulfillment out of. Uh, that would, uh, that's number one. I would say number two is keeping a, a high level of, I think it's really important to um, keep, keep an open dialogue of communication. Uh, so what that would look like is if, if, you're, if you find yourself constantly going into spats and constantly fighting with someone that you normally don't fight with, mm-hmm. that you know your communication, the way that you communicate with each other becomes more important than like how you communicate with the person, um, so to speak. So, so instead of like, let's, let's use dishes as an example. That might, that's something that I think a lot of people would, would fight over, you know, you, you saying something like you never do the dishes. I always do the dishes. Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily true. You know, the, the, per, the first, per, first thing that's going to happen is that the person is going to get defensive and the person is going to say, that's not true. I did them the other day. I did them. I did them two years ago. You didn't say anything. You weren't, you know, you weren't grateful back then. It's, you know, and they're going to get defensive. And then that's how that mm-hmm. spat is going to start. Um, and so instead of using the words always and never, replacing those words with uh, it feels like and it seems like, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it, you know, it feels like I'm doing the dishes a lot more than, you know, than you. It seems like uh, it seems like you're not that interested in, in doing the dishes. And now what happens when you even something that slight of a change, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not talking, you're not putting the person on, on the defense, you're putting the person in a position where they're going to talk about what the actual topic, the dishes. So it seems like you're not doing the dishes. Well, what, what may, the person is probably going to say something like, well, what makes you say that? Well, it feels like the last week I, I've been doing them a lot. Now mm-hmm. we're talking about the actual issue the dishes. And so Mm -hmm. now the person, they really don't have any choice but to respond to the dishes. Well, okay, well, I can, you know, you're right. I, I haven't done them in the last week. Let me pick up the slack. I'll make sure I do them every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever. Now we're talking about the actual problem instead of people getting defensive and kind of getting into their feelings, so to speak. So you want, so, so basically you need people to remember that they are, uh, you know, in quarantine, they may be a little stressed, but remember to change those words, right? Approach Absolutely. it differently is what you're Absolutely. saying. And I, um, it's so funny. It's a book I read and it was talking about like choosing your wording when you're discussing things. And it kind of gave some examples, similar, not a dish example, but it was changing certain things to, it seems like I'm always doing to like the things that you mentioned. Um, so really good tips. Now I know that we are at, let me see what time. We got some more people that joined the live. Now, if you just joined the live, make sure you share this out. I'm talking to Matthew Pfeiffer. He's a therapist. He um, does mostly virtual, all virtual sessions almost. And he really talks about toxic relationships. Um, and we're discussing um, really that we know domestic violence, child abuse has went up since the quarantine. Like in the last couple of weeks, a lot of these numbers are really rising. So I'm going to have um, the therapists are going to be repeating all throughout the month you guys. So I appreciate you guys for giving the time to do this, um, to make sure you have a therapist that you can reach out to, you know, share this out on your page. You may be okay, but it may be somebody that's not on your page. It's not okay. And they really need to kind of reach out to like, I had Natalie on Monday and Matt will be on Wednesday. So they will be repeating every Monday and Wednesday during the month of April to make sure that they can reach out to the community and, um, no matter where you are. So, um, now, Matt, any other thoughts you want to add to this topic? I know this is like your forte. So I'm going to kind of just give you the floor and, 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 and let us know all your uh, good knowledge you can in the next, I guess, about five minutes, because I do have another meeting I need to hop into. Um, I, 
Well, I, I think that it's important to know that, um, especially when we're talking about emotional abuse, that um, we're not just talking about um, we're not just talking about romantic relationships. Um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Um, I, I would, I would, you know, a lot of the people that I've seen or I've talked to over the last couple of weeks are actually dealing with the toxic mother or toxic, um, a toxic family member. And they've seen a dramatic increase with, um, with those family members. And I, I think, well, I shouldn't say I think, a lot of people, a lot of abusers right now are using the quarantine to um, create uh, another level of control. So I've also seen a lot of um, an increase in parental alienation. Uh, so what that is, is um, when someone is basically using your children as a weapon. So um, people who share children with, with someone, the other person may say something like, well, because of the, because of the virus, I don't feel comfortable sending them to, sending them to your house. Um, I, I was talking to one person, one woman who's a nurse and the uh, husband did what was refusing to play nice, so to speak, and wouldn't send the kids back to, to see her because, because of the virus, um, which I, she didn't have it. There's, there's no reason for him not to, um, you know, so uh, I, I guess my, my bit of advice is that, you know, even though people are going to use these methods um, as another layer of control and another layer, layer of abuse, um, you still always have, that, does, that doesn't, number one, it doesn't make, that, make it right. Number mm -hmm. one, number two, um, it does not, um, does not make you defenseless. Um, you know, it, for example, if you have children and you have uh, custody on paper and things like that, like they still have to abide by that. They still legally, they still have to, they still have to do everything that, that the courts have, uh, have aligned and, and it may be difficult and it may be inconvenient to fight, but it's necessary, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I think, so in the situation I do, I got a question. So in the situation where you're dealing with like a family member, um, like how do you handle that? Like, is, do you even like, if it gets really bad, do you even try to find another place for that family member to stay during the quarantine or like how? How are people navigating through that situation? If you can share, it, I don't know, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it depends. Um, I mean, some people have a place big enough that you can, you know, that you can kind of be on, on one end of the house and allow them to have another. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, you went on mute. Okay. Give us a moment. As Matt did it, you two. Are you there? <clears throat> yeah, you there. All right, sorry. Bye. Um, so, um, you know, some people have a, a place big enough where you can, you know, where you can be on one side of the house and the other person can be mm -hmm. on the other side of the house. We have, um, but some people do need to leave. Some people do need to find mm -hmm. another place to go because the abuse is, um, is intolerable. The, the mm -hmm. criticism is intolerable. Um, and it, it, you, you get to a point where you actually feel like you're, you don't feel like you're in quarantine. You feel like you're in prison. And if you're in that type of situation, then that's a, that's a major problem. You're not, yeah, we're, we're quarantined and yeah, we're, we're shut out, but we're free. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is making you feel like, uh, like you're trapped and like you can't go anywhere, like they have all the control, like they, they're telling you what to do, where to go, this and that, like that's, uh, that's unacceptable. And if uh, and a lot of people that are like that are reluctant, and I shouldn't say reluctant, won't give up that type of control, you know. So it, it may get to a point where you need to find somewhere else to stay. And if you can't find another another place to stay, it may get to a point where you just use this time to go to develop that action plan. Um, because if you can't leave, and or if you can't if you can't leave now. Um, you're going to get to a point where you, you fall into a depression and things like that. And so coming up with an action plan and knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, that eventually that this is going to end as, that this is going to end at some point in time um, becomes very vital to, you know, yourself, your mental health. And, um, and just knowing that, that this, that this too shall pass at, at some point. Right. 
Well, I thank you for spending time with me today. This has been a very good conversation. We're getting a lot of comments already. I'm pretty sure we'll have plenty more over the next 24 hours. So guys, make sure you share this out um, on your um, page as well. As you know, you don't know who may be dealing with the situation. They may not discover it until we got under quarantine. And now, you know, families are in the house together. A lot of different things are occurring and happening. And from the two therapists I've talked to, this week, you are everybody saying that the, the abuse is going up. So um, definitely, you know, praying for all the families and everybody that's dealing with different situations and getting put into different unique situations as this, uh, you know, crisis is changing um, everybody's lives. Right? It's affecting all of us in different ways. So I just want to make sure that on my on the lives that you'll get through the month of April. Um, let you guys know before I let Matt give his information. We'll have a fitness instructor, a boxing coach. I even got a, a pair, pair of doctors that are going to come on. So I'm really excited about that. They're going to talk about building your immune system, what's going on and all that. So be looking out for that. Um, also, we'll have some more therapists, meditation, yoga, all different types of things happening this month. So stylists, entrepreneurs. So if you're trying to you know, start a business at this time, but I wanted to specifically focus on mental health. That's why I have Matt and Natalie coming on the whole entire month of April because mental health is the basis of everything. So before you think about building that business, before you think about trying to create, acquire that new skill, um, while you're dealing with your family daily, um, you need to be in a good mental state. And so they're going to be coming on during the whole month talking about different things, anxiety, depression, grief, because um, everybody's dealing with different type of grief. It may not be you lost someone, but you may have lost a job or you may be dealing with low income at this point, you know, different shifts that are happening. So it's different type of griefs that are happening. Now, Matt, give the people all your contact information, what you have going on and where they can find you at. Yeah, you can find me. Um, <clears throat> my website is uh, mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Um, I'm very active on Instagram, Matt Pfeiffer Coaching, uh, Facebook, Matt, uh, Matt Pfeiffer Coaching. Uh, I'm pretty much on all um, on all major uh, social media networks, including TikTok at this point. Um, I'm also you can you can also listen to my podcast. It's Toxic to Triumph um, on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Pandora, and iHeartRadio. It's also uh, pretty much on all on all podcast platforms as well. Um, Google Play. Um, you can pretty much find it anywhere at this point. Okay. Well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. Make sure you check out his podcast. He goes live on his Facebook page too with another therapist. So make sure you uh, go ahead and follow him on Facebook or go friend request him as well. I have tagged him up above. I will drop um, his information below too as well if you need to contact him to schedule a session. Um, we want to make sure that during this month and during this time that you're getting all the assistance and help that you need. Um, and like I said, it all starts with your mental health. So I appreciate you, Matt. We'll see you next I Wednesday. Do, uh, I, um, one second. I do okay. want to say Say that because this is not on my, any of my websites or anything, but um, I am giving uh, a, an extreme discounted session for people who are dealing with any type of um, COVID related issues. Uh, so okay. I'm doing 30 for 30 for 30, so 30 uh, 30 dollars for 30 minutes. Wow! Um, and so uh, if you for that, uh, either email me. My email is in my is at my uh, is on my website. Um, but it's uh, Matthew Matthew Pfeiffer at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. And um, just email, email me directly and um, you know we can coordinate from there. Okay, I'll get your contact information and I'll drop it in the comments below. That way we have it. But then, um, yeah, that's good. You know, and a lot of people are offering discounts at this point uh, when it comes to the COVID-19 and different situations. Um, so make sure you guys tune in to my Facebook. I'll be live tomorrow with Latasha, who will be talking all about finances and stuff. So it won't just be uh, the mental health, but I have different um, gurus, professionals, and um, so forth coming up just to kind of touch on all topics this month. So thank you again, Matt. I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Make sure you send me your information so I'm dropping the comments. Have a blessed one and stay safe. All right, you too. All right, thank you.